Good morning. Eight thirty in the morning, on December the fourteenth, twenty twenty-three. I'd like to open the meeting of the uh, special meeting of the Tulsa Municipal Airport Trust. Uh, first item of business is approved the minutes of the September fourteenth, twenty twenty-three meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Review and receive the audited financial statement of TMAP. Yes, uh, uh, we'd like to welcome Jonathan Wish uh, here with uh, Conklin Hill Cleaning Works, and he'll just do a pre uh, review of the audit. Thank you, Matt. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you to Jeff and the RCM. Um, they were very responsive. Information was great. They made our job very easy. Uh, so our audit was conducted in accordance with generally accepted uh, auditing standards as well as governmental auditing standards. Um, we had no findings for the audit, nothing to report. We made no adjustments to the financial statements. So uh, what you see in the financial statements, that was basically what was given to us. So um, if that goes, everything been really great. Uh, the only thing I would point out is you'll see on our audit report, there is a paragraph that um, just states that the management discussion and analysis has been admitted. That's typically a required part of uh, government audit standards, but that's been consistent with, with these financial statements for a year. So that's um, not really a, a concern of ours, just, uh, just to explain that. Um, the other, other thing that I would point out is that for this year, uh, a new accounting standard went into effect. That was the IPA 87 that has to do with leases. Um, it was determined that the leases that you had uh, were considered regulated leases, which were exempt from that uh, new accounting standard. So effectively, for, for these financial statements, nothing really changed. Um, and we agreed with that assessment. So all in all, everything went really great. Nothing to report. Um, is, are there any questions that anybody else might have for me? No. All right. We're good. Thank yeah. you, John. Thank, Thank you. you. And then we'll just receive that report. That audit. All right. What, what, what do you want? Old business? Old business. Well, that's all right. I don't assume there is no old business. None. None. Okay. New business. Right. Move to adjourn. Move, we adjourn. Right. All those in favor? All right. We are out. Yeah. Good Mr. Welcome. Good to be here. Yeah. yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> so we're going to see yeah, let's go to okay. We're all in the special meeting of the Tulsa International Airport Development Trust. Uh call a special meeting to order. And approve the minutes of the September 14th, 2023 annual meeting. Do I have a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, approve development and financing assistance agreement by and between the Tulsa International Airport Development Trust and NTNT Fuel. And I'll take this one. Uh, we are excited uh, for this meeting and the subsequent meeting we'll be having related to a convenience store out at the front entryway of our airport. And so uh, this is an assistance and development agreement uh, correlating to that. This is in, as you may uh, well be aware, an activated TIP already. So this TIP has about 16 years uh, remaining in that term. So this will allow us to capture uh, the sales tax generated as part of this convenience store as well, given amenity we've been working on for a number of years here at the airport uh, to our customers and our clients. Uh, we anticipate this revenue related to this project to be around 3.3 million on the land value alone for the primary term. Uh, and then the concession revenue estimates look like around 2.3 million in addition to that land lease revenue that we'll receive as part of our concession agreement with this development and developer. Uh, looking at just over $3.3 million in uh, initial CapEx on this, obviously ongoing operating costs. Um, and so excited for this development. I know we have uh, Mr. Patel here, who's we're very familiar with, and we've got an agreement that we're excited uh, to move forward on uh, in our uh, next meeting at TIAT. But this is specifically related to the commitments of their development and then that capture and rebate of that TIF dollars. That will be greatly appreciated by the people that are turning in rental cars. Yes. Mm. yes sir. <laughs> and 
Daniel, I did have your slides. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I've got just a couple of slides here. No worries. Uh, you know, take liberty with some of these, if that's okay. So uh, this is uh, the initial lease area. So this is tie into the, the future discussion, but this is the lease area right there at the hard corner as you get off that exit ramp on Highway 11 there, right at Airport Drive. So it'll be the first thing you see when you're coming back into the airport here. Uh, and then if we can go on to that next slide. Uh, this is a initial concept rendering uh, that we received, obviously still in final design phases, but um, those are the, uh, the the general idea of theme. It'll be a, as we've seen in our uh, presentations, I'll share further uh, going forward, but a nice, clean, well-operated, uh, well-branded uh, gas station. Yeah, great. Convenient. It is going to be yes. new also. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what you always search for. Yeah. When you How many acres? What's the size of the... About two acres. Just, just okay. Pretty good size there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Item number four. Oh, we need, we to, need to approve that. Oh, we need to approve that. I, uh, uh, move approval, move approval, approval on number three. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Item three is approved. Item four. Right. Item four is approved development and financing system agreement by and between Tulsa International Airport Development Trust and Camo Farms LLC DBA Cowboy Asphalt. This will be a pretty large size tract of land for us uh, for our land development. Uh, this will also give us the opportunity to activate a new uh, TIP district area that we were running up against our timelines on to hit based on our project plan. And so this is uh, TIP district E. Uh, which sits uh, kind of between 169 and Mingo, but really wraps that 169 corridor on the southern edge of our industrial development track there. Uh, this is an asphalt mixing and, and production plant. And so as such, they will generate a significant amount of sales tax revenue in the sales of that asphalt. Um, and, and projections are for us 20 year lease term um, with a tip capture, uh, total tip capture estimated around $15 million on their conservative but project projected numbers. So it allows us to pretty quickly fill up the bucket of that TIF and what our development plan allows for and use those dollars for other future projects and, and infrastructure investment that's well needed over there. Um, the CapEx on this one, we're looking at similar, just around $3.2 million, a 25 year uh, TIF term, because we are capturing the full TIF on this one. So it allows us to, uh, to extend that out. Um, and this one will be a not to exceed uh, as well, uh, but with a cap on it of 1.6. So on a $15 mil million dollar capture, pretty significantly less what we're contributing back there. But um, again, we felt it was appropriate and relevant based on the, the revenue generation of the whole project. So. Any questions? Do I have a motion? Do you have a bigger map as to exactly where this is? Uh, so this is Apache and Mingo right across from Navistar. More oh. or less. Yep. So this is the southern end of our industrial area there oh, on Mingo Road. Um, kind of Apache leads into what's a lift plant, a uh, sewer uh, lift plant there that's uh, oh, just right. to the east of that. All right. Good deal. We have you a, got a motion? Yes, there's a motion. I make a motion to approve number four. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. In the old business. No. You know, <laughs> motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now we're at the front of the room. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Dan. Uh, okay. Okay. okay, we'll open the meeting for the regular special meeting of Tulsa Airport's Improvement Trust and Tulsa Airport Authority, special and regular. And item one is approved the minutes of the November 9th, 2023 meeting of and the trust. Item motion. Second. Everybody's in favor. All right. All right. Uh, operating and financial. Yeah, so I'll kick things off. We have several things to cover today, so I'll try to be as quick as I can. Um, Brian is going to give an overview of our passenger surveys. Andrew's going to give an update on TUL and RBS pilot surveys. 
Of course, Bernetta's financial reports, which include really great positive passenger employment numbers. I did want to start things off just kind of summarizing 2023. Um, because it's been a busy year. These were our three key buckets. Of course, this is what we start the year out saying this is our plan, but many things happen throughout the year and our team is working on our annual report, which will come out towards the end of this month. But I just thought um, looking back at, at the year and where we started, so we had 30 goals related or 31 goals related to sustainability. Um, we've achieved 97% essentially of those goals, everything related to documentation of procedures. I mean, just so we can help train people in lease management, building maintenance, operations, and information technology. Um, we continue to invest in employee training and development, and we're seeing that pay off in terms of our employees taking advantage of upward mobility opportunities and contributing in ways that they haven't before. Um, we've rolled out new tech programs. Um, so we, we have Microsoft 365, um, we are engaging in Microsoft Teams and learning about the capabilities, and that's actually how we're tracking our goals with our teams now. Um, there's a great tool in, in Teams that allows us to share information. Um, and then we're really focused on business continuity in terms of having critical parts on staff. We've talked a lot about supply chain, and so we we have um, JetBridge canopies on, on in stock in case one breaks. Um, essential conveyor parts. We've invested $600,000 in our conveyor system. And um, and then we've also focused on parking capacity um, because we've seen with additional activity, we need additional space for our customers. And so we have an overflow lot now. And airline seat capacity falls in this bucket as well. And we've had great success in increasing our overall capacity, which has really driven our passenger numbers. So our, our intentional focus on sustainable organizational operations has really uh, taken off this year, and I think we're going to continue that focus going into 2024. Um, focusing on operational transformation, of course, our big projects are the FIS, which we've completed the design on and now secured a contract for, and then the air traffic control tower design is complete. Um, we're focusing on, or we, we also launched new FIDs. Um, we are focusing on our long range capital spend. We're negotiating our, our, negotiating our airline use and lease agreement, which requires us to think about long-term capital needs. Um, we rolled out new body camera technology, um, our, a new police records management system, a new, all of our dispatchers in the police department have now been certified in OLEDs. Um, we launched a new taxi cab queuing system. We focused on placemaking through wayfinding. And even though you haven't seen those results yet, we have a plan in place that we're going to start implementing in 2024. We've been utilizing our drone in ways that we've never utilized it before to support airfield operations and safety. And we've selected a monumental um, terminal art installation, which is in the process of being created and it'll be installed next year. In terms of community investment and delivering value, again, something that's gonna carry over into 2024, but we hit 92% of our goals in this bucket. Um, really focusing on high school engagement, getting high schoolers out here and exposed to careers in aviation and careers here at the airport um, with our technology team and our operations team and our fleet management team um, just showing kids that there are there's a pathway for them um, here at the airport, whether that's working for us or one of our tenants. We've had college um, interns from OSU and ORU, and then high school interns from the Met and um, Tulsa Honor Academy. Thank you. And uh, the other thing that we've been doing is working with the Bridges Foundation. Our customer experience team is inviting them to come out with their clients to see what their capabilities are and if there's a job match for, for their clients here at the airport. And then um, doing a lot of training around human trafficking this year. That was a focus. We announced a partnership um, with the Blue Lightning Initiative and um, have provided a couple of training courses related to that and then just overall employee and, and customer safety. And um, <clears throat> Related to our uh, delivering value to the community, the work that Daniel's doing, um, we did launch a hydrology study. We hope to have our initial draft of that report back soon. But looking at our land between Mingo and 169 and determining how we can maximize use of that land with that floodplain through it. 
but it's been a busy year. I look forward to sharing with you the, the annual report, but I thought it would be good to kind of reflect in December on the busy 12 months that we've had this year. So um, there are a couple of other things I just wanted to, to highlight. So at the Marketing Communication Awards, which API hosts, we took first place um, for the launch of our guest services area. So Stephanie attended that and um, we were thrilled to, to receive that recognition. We also were finalists in two other categories and they're already thinking about what they're entering for next year. Um, we, have, we hosted a Tulsa remote event. Andrew gave an update on airport activities and Visit Tulsa um, provided an update on their activities. It was a nice partnership um, Visit Pulsa actually sponsored part of the event with us, and then we gave a tour, a behind-the-scenes tour of the airport. It's great visiting with those participants because they use the airport a lot and gave us some really good feedback. So um, we were named one of Oklahoma Magazine's great companies to work for in 2023, and uh, just want to continue that commitment going, going forward. And at the end of the day, it's it's what our employees think of us more so than what Oklahoma Magazine does, but we appreciate the recognition for sure. And then today is our last story time at the airport for the year, but the good news is they've agreed to sign on for, for all of 2024. They've been very happy with the participation of the airport event. And um, I attend. I went out last month at the event and their librarian was just top notch. She, she was so good. And the kids are singing and dancing under the airplane, and then they can go post security if they want and watch airplanes. And overall, it's a good event. So excited for that. And with that, um, I'd like to invite Brian up to give an update of our passenger surveys for this year. Good morning, everyone. So I uh, want to give an update. Uh, we finished our passenger surveys in November uh, this year and uh, wanted to cover uh, some of the things that we've been, been able to pull out of that. Um, we actually had, of those that were surveyed, 38% of them were business travel, 62% was personal travel. And one of the things I like to see, because I really stress this to customers, is because we are very busy, is to arrive at the terminal early for your flight. And 43% uh, of those that we surveyed arrived at least an hour and a half before their departure which is great. Uh, that's something that we really stress. We see it on the internet a lot. People say it's so easy to get through. You can get to the airport, get through the checkpoint, get to my gate in 10 minutes. And I'm like, yeah, but you can't always do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, don't want to, to get that false impression. So I'm glad to see that people are uh, getting here early. Uh, this is a heat map that shows uh, where those individuals uh, that we surveyed um, yeah. And uh, we can see 63% uh, of them from Oklahoma. Uh, Texas and California were the next highest, which is what we see year over year, uh, typically. Uh, one of the interesting things is we had two individuals from Canada. We had one from Brazil. We had one from United, United Arab Emirates and one from Australia that we uh, were able to meet this year. <coughs> So the next one. Thank you. Airport renovations. So this is a historical question that we asked them. Do you consider the airport to be a modern facility? 93% of our passengers this year responded yes. Uh, you can see there the historical data for the last few years. I just want to point out we did not do uh, passenger surveys in 2020 during COVID. So that's why you do not see any 2020 numbers there. Um, you know, cleanliness is the number one driver for customer experience. And so this, uh, the cleanliness of our airport is very, very important. And uh, this, we typically hear this from our passengers consistently month after month. We're the cleanest airport they fly through. Believe it or not, 100%. We only had two people that did not answer this question out of the 250 some that we uh, talked to. 100% of them said that it was from the terminal was clean. Great. Great. Um, then we asked them, did you use a restroom? 75% of them used a restroom. We asked them, was the restroom clean? 96% of our passengers said the restroom was clean. So 
Uh, that's great numbers. You can see the historical numbers, just a, a few percentage points lower there, but uh, I still think uh, we're doing good uh, as far as keeping our airport clean. Um, parking, uh, this is one that we added about four years ago. Uh, we wanted to find out what people's experience was with our parking. Um, the we see that the largest percentage of our passengers are actually dropped off. That was 36% of our respondents. 25% uh, drive their own vehicle, but out of those 25%, 75% of them use Tate airport parking. And so um, their experience, they rated as an 8.8 .8 this year. And the number one, because we asked them, what can we do to improve it? And the number one remark was more parking. Uh, we've been very busy, and so we've had many, uh, many times, I hear it consistently, that our parking uh, garage is full and uh, people love car covered parking. So, and then uh, the last question is our overall passenger ranking. We asked them, how was your overall experience at the airport? Uh, this year, we ranked at a 9.1. Um, you can see there 9.6 in 2019, that was a banner year for us. Um, we scored extremely high in all of our categories that year, but uh, I think we are headed in a good direction. Uh, we do ask them, what can we do to improve that experience, their overall experience? And the top three things were more restaurants, food auctions, uh, faster bag delivery, for the baggage claim. <laughs> And more direct flights. So, any questions? Looks like everyone was very happy in 2019. The residents. Yes, they were. Yeah. <laughs> kind of going downhill since. Yeah. <laughs> got a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, those those are the questions that were changed. Right. 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 Yes. No. That's no. We, yeah. Same things we hear here. But we're getting better. We're yeah. working at it all that's the time. Cool. We feel like well, we have more passengers in the building than we did in 2019. And I just would like to say that um, Brian's team really is responsible for the maintenance of the terminal building and even the janitorial service contracts. Our janitorial staff just does an exceptional job. Our, our floors um, always look great. The bathrooms look great. And it's, it's just impressive uh, because I know that everybody's struggling with employees, but their their team really does a great job and these surveys reflect that. So very good. Very good, Brian. Thank you. You have another uh, um so Andrew's gonna just quickly go over the pilot surveys that we received from Riverside and TUL. Yes. So this is we're first starting out with TUL pilot surveys. So we received 19 responses this year. So slightly up from last year. It's a little bit harder to hit some of the pilots that come into TUL since a lot of them are commercial pilots, um, and so they're transiting versus being based here. Um, but about half the respondents were business pass or business uh, pilots, and then uh, the rest uh, commercial and personal users. Uh, we did see some positive increases. We asked, how do you feel about TUL's current and upcoming airfield project since we've had so much going on? And uh, we have seen a shift to the left um, uh, over uh, about 65, 70% of passengers are either very informed or somewhat informed. So we're going to continue to uh, try to get the word out about our uh, upcoming air cool projects to them the best that we can. Um, when we look at the fall rating facilities at TUL, um, just a huge shout out to our ops team here at TUL. Um, I'll kind of just look at, um, if you look at on the left side, the ones that scored the, the highest are anything with our runways, taxiways, the operation of the airfield itself um, scored really well and had the largest increases year over year. Um, the lowest um, scoring were food services or uh, available hangar facilities, um, but everything in terms of pavement conditions, taxiways, snow removal, nav aids, lighting, saw double digit increases year over year. So again, huge shout out to our ops team. Uh, and the only two scores that decreased year over year, again, were available hangar facilities. Uh, and then uh, we continually get some comments on the ATIS, um, that, which is broadcast to pilots for being a little bit too lengthy. Uh, again, both of those are a little bit, um, our ATIS is out of our control, but we'll continue to 
work on developing additional hangar space. Um, and then in terms of open comments for TUL, again, all positive comments about the airfield itself for the most part, it's access roads to the airport, uh, perimeter road, which is a project that we are kicking off or kicked off, um, improving, uh, rehabilit rehabilitating that um, surface. Um, so really it's just access roads, the as well as the Sheridan and Apache Road um, to the southwest of the airport down by L3, which is pretty beat up and is a city of Balsa Road. Um, so again, really strong results for T-Well. Um, and then uh, in terms of winter weather operations, um, 99% of respondents were either satisfied, very satisfied, or this year uh, did, were kind of neutral. And we believe that's just because there was really no massive snow event this year like we've had in the past. Uh, for Riverside, uh, we received 69 responses this year. Again, about 75% personal uh, and in the last quarter uh, business uh, pilots. Uh, again, strong, strong results in terms of the airfield itself. Um, some continuing um, trends that we've seen year over year in terms of wanting self-service fuel options, as well as increased security at the airport, increased security lighting at the airport. Um, but everything uh, still scoring really well. Um, snow removal had a, a large increase year over year. Um, and then access roads and security lighting at the airport are the two um, lower scoring or declining uh, issues down at Riverside. Uh, and this kind of hits on that as well. The, the biggest comments that we had received were self-serve fuel, uh, as well as uh, airfield security um, around, uh, as well as access roads at the airport. Dan, or Andrew, you said that airfield maintenance item um, was mainly related to grass and... Yeah, sorry. Uh, the airfield maintenance item there, you're seeing 60%, uh, a lot of mole and gopher issues, I uh, think. Yeah. Um, and occasionally there were some... Um, uh, vegetation kind of going growing through some of the cracks, but most of the comments on airfield maintenance were mull and gopher issues. <laughs> security, are they having an issue? Is there something going on, or is that just a comment? No, a lot of it was we used to have um, in the past a security team. We had a security guard that would be down there um, a couple nights a week. And we just didn't think that that was very effective. And so what we've done, um, Paul and our police department have an officer that randomly drives through just based on availability here. Um, I would say, you know, maybe a half dozen times a week or so, maybe a little bit more than that, but just trying to provide some visibility. And then the other thing is we're really focused on a security fencing project right now um, and looking at how we can you know, right now when you pull up, there may be a gate there, but the gates can go up just depending on where the gate's located. So we're looking at making improvements to the fencing. But there, you're not hearing about people having burglars or whatever. No, no, there's more just the, having the presence out there in the past, which we as like said. And then open comments, really a lot of positive uh, comments about the ATC at Riverside, as well as our team doing a really strong job. Uh, as far as maintenance down there. So um, for the most part, strong, strong results from Riverside as well. We have, you have a gate code and that's being passed around too Every much? Quarter. There's a gate code that is passed around to all the tenants to get in and out of that gate that Alexis was talking about. And we, I don't how often is that sort of poorly? So. The problem, I, I see, I just see it up there. I'm, uh, um, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of things that are going to cell phones and that sort of thing that but are encrypted and you can't really share. So yeah. So I mean, we've talked about doing a badging system down there, similar to what we have here. There's just such a greater number of tenants down yeah. there. And then there are visitors to those tenants, and how do you accommodate for that? There are solutions out there. Um well, I don't know that that's a serious problem. Though. Yeah. Well, I have a, I mean, and if we do a bad system, I guarantee you we're going to get pushed back. Right. 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 Yeah. So, yeah. Well, we're in the middle of a, a security analysis. Um, okay. So Austin and our engineering team have been working with KS, KSA, right? KSA. 
um, to just look at best practices for general aviation airport security. And they're going to come up with some recommendations and present them to us. Okay. Yep. Again, that's just one, one open-ended comment. It wasn't multiple times that we saw that. So that was just the first one that popped up. Yeah. Okay. We need better uh, IT coverage out there. Like, I can't run a single camera. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that was one of the questions too. And we have some, some information and what we've talked about is how we can be a facilitator to try to bring a partner in that can improve access for data um, and sell. So. Um, so the, the makeup of TUL surveys, you had a lot more commercial pilots this year than others. Is that, was that just random? No, so we, we send out our pilot surveys to all the FBOs to see if we can get, you know, transient pilots. We send them out to all the airlines here. Um, and then we have to rely on them to then pass it on to the pilots directly since we don't have a lot of those emails. So it kind of ebbs and flows in terms of, at TUL specifically, in terms of who we get, mm -hmm. um, just based on how it's distributed beyond once we send it out. Okay, just curious, I mean, you, yeah. you would think Year after year, it would be similar, but I mean, that wouldn't lose. Yeah, and even the military respondents from the Guard also kind of fluctuate based on if they respond or not. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Hey, good morning. Good morning. So, this first slide covers the activity for October to October and the fiscal year to date. So the fiscal year today for the same period last year. You see our revenues are fantastic for the month of October or 10% greater than we earned in the last year's October. We had increased activity in the terminal. Expenses are also 10% higher than they were last October, which gives us uh, a net budget-based income of 11% greater than the same period last fiscal year. Our food and beverage also 10% and the retail 12% higher for the month of October. Our parking activity, even though our rates are flat and our capacity for the month of October, we were 5% uh, higher than we were in October 22. And the parking activity, six. The revenues were 6% greater than they were October 22. The rent of car, the gross revenue, they had a fantastic month uh, at five point, almost $5.7 million in gross revenue. Um, the rent of car transaction days were also up 12%. And uh, operations and the fuel flow. And RBS were just pretty flat, down like 1%. There was Less friendly closures during the month of October than there had been in the previous few months of the fiscal year. So, in plain cargo continues to follow a downward trend. I think that's pretty much the same across the country. Our in plain passengers were 4% higher than they were in uh, October of the And here's the visual of our in plain months. You can see um, we're four percent higher for the month, but the the fiscal year to date is three percent higher than the last fiscal year to date. But the calendar year is actually nine percent higher than the calendar year of twenty two, and it's even four percent higher than twenty nineteen, which continues to be one of our benchmark years. If I may, for data, it was the busiest October since. 2000. Yes, the 2000 and the busiest month yeah. since July of 08. Yeah, so it was a great month. Wow. Yeah. This is um, comparing a little bit more deep, deeper dive into the um, actuals for fiscal year 24 and fiscal year 23. Our um, Passenger, our, our revenues are 7% greater than they were in fiscal year 22. It's driven by uh, landing fees in the passenger carrier category. 
The terminal has an additional $140,000 revenue. That's mainly due to clear. And our food and beverage concessions also contributing to that. The other buildings and ground is flat. The airfield is down a little bit, or not actually, it's down 9%. That's due to the cargo landing fees being less. The parking and rent a car is parking, rent a car concessions, but also ground transportation is contributing $40,000 to that uh, increase. RVS is up about 9%. That's just due to the every January, the contracts all, the leases all increase by the IPDI or the CPI. Uh, our miscellaneous revenues are up 480000 We're just uh, earning a lot more interest than we were this, at this time last year. Our expenses are 9% higher than they were the same period last year. Salary and benefits is starting up. We, we have more positions. I think we have six more positions, which drives your taxes mm -hmm. and the pension and everything up. <clears throat> Materials and supplies are about 80,000 higher than they were last year. Just we're buying package conveyor parts and other stocking up on some inventory. Our services are up uh, $366,000. So we have uh, more consulting. We have an airline consultant uh, to help us with the lease negotiations. Utilities are higher. And we've done some repairs at the cargo in the cargo area. That leaves us our net is five percent higher than it was at the same time last year. The next slide is our cash position. So at the end of October, we have about eighty-six million dollars in the bank. That's kind of the breakdown there of the categories that are in track. Uh, that first number is the unrestricted cash by the definition in the airline use and lease agreement. And that gives us 356 days of cash on hand per the AULA. Now, if we were doing it based on the rating agencies, we'd have over 500 days of cash. So. Which we're stocking up for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have contracts that already are going to take a good one to that. So. Thank you for that. Yes. I did want to mention um, the other slides that she has presented before in your books. And so if, if you want that additional detail, um, Brigitte and I were talking after last month's meeting and trying to figure out what is the key information. So if there's something missing that you'd like her to hit on, just let us know and we'll add it back for next month. Great. Thank, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Item four, Visions of the Employees Handbook. Number three. Oh, three. Oh, I need to see that. So we've completed our audit for fiscal year 23, and we have Kevin Smith, the partner at, uh, at RSM here, to, to talk about it a little bit. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here to go through the results from the fiscal year 2023 audit. Um, there's several deliverables that are issued in conjunction with our audit. So I'll kind of speak to each of those and then answer any questions that you have. Um, the, the main thing you have is the financial statements. Um, what your the responsibility therefore is to compile those numbers and we audit that in accordance with general accounting principles. We issue an opinion as to whether those financials are in accordance with those standards. And the opinion that you see in the financial statement is an unmodified or clean opinion. Um, so that is the highest level of assurance that you can receive as a part of a financial statement audit. One of the other reports you see is a compliance report, which is a summary of all the federal grants that the airport spends during the fiscal year. Um, we test those and work that they're spent in compliance with the federal requirements. Um, we also we have no findings to report within within that report. Uh, you'll also see a report on internal controls in that document, and that is a report that we issue over internal controls over financial reporting. Uh, we don't express an opinion on internal controls, but we do uh, report to you any controls that you would consider to be significant deficiencies or material weaknesses, um, and there were none of those to report to you in that, in that document either. 
The last thing you see is a report on the passenger facility charge program. This is uh, required to be looked at each year by the, the FAA requires that we test that those PFC funds that you collect are spent on approved projects. Um, within that report, you won't see any findings either. There were no issues, instances of non compliance reported there. So, overall, very, very positive uh, results from the audit. And full cooperation from from Verdetta and her whole team, and um, you know, no difficulties performing the audit. So happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, very cool. No, no, for me, I'm, yeah, I'm good. good audit. So. Very good. Thank you very much, Verdetta. That goes a lot to you. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I'm approved revision taking the boy handbook. Morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, number four is approved revisions to the Tate Employee Handbook, <clears throat> excuse me, formerly called the Human Resources Policy Manual. The proposed revisions were provided in advance to the trustees prior to consideration. So I believe on Monday afternoon, you all received a 109 page document. Yeah, it was pleasure, interesting. As well as a cliff note. You did an uh, awful lot of cleaned up and get rid of stuff that wasn't in there. That was good. We did. We did. We did try to clarify things. There's minor grammatical entries here, those kinds of things. We did add 12 policies that we thought were pertinent to have, uh, both for our employees and, and for the company. Um, I have the summary. You all have the summary in front of you. If you have any questions on that, I'd be happy to address any of them. I will say that it has been reviewed multiple times between Alexis Paul and I. So we feel confident we asked for your approval on this on this new employee handbook. You can improve. <laughs> so um this is um changing the policy. Do yeah. we need a kind of a statement that we can pass it now? Uh, because in the past, you know, we I think we changed that. We, yeah, you know, no, we changed it. We did. I didn't know whether there was a caveat to a motion. We can just, I uh, know that was, we did the motion prior to our update of this. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. I would move approval number four. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. All right. All right. approved. Thank Thanks you. for sending those things yeah. in advance. Yeah. Oh, very much for that. Yeah. We're happy to have it completed. And I did read them, but um, <laughs> it took me a couple of days. <laughs> well, thank you. I could only do it, it in small segments. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was. Uh, I, I did appreciate the fact you took so much yeah. straight stuff out. That was, that was Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, approved agreement with Blue Cross Blue yes. Shield. Item number five is approve the agreement with Blue Cross, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma for the annual medical insurance coverage in an amount not to exceed one point six million dollars effective January one, twenty twenty four. The estimated amount of the agreement is $1,480,197.76 and represents a 1.1% increase from the previous plan year. The contract uh, amount does depend on enrollment numbers and our enrollment is up this year because we're more fully staffed this year. All plans provided are the same as the plans that we have in 2023. So we would ask for your approval on that item. Any questions? Thank you very much. Move approval. All right, please. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Item five is approved. Item six. Item six is to approve agreement with Blue Cross Blue Shield for dental insurance in an amount not to exceed 110000 effective January 1, 2024. The estimated amount of the agreement is $103,668.24. and represents a 5.01% increase from the previous plan year. The contract also depends on enrollment numbers. All plans are the same uh, as this year. We would recommend approval on that. Any question? Move okay. approval number, number six, item six. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Number six is approved. Number seven. <clears throat> number seven, amend uh, award of contract to control touch systems and sole service provider an amount not to exceed Six hundred fifty-three thousand for the upgrade of our uh, baggage handling variable frequency drive. So last month we brought this to you, um, and 
through the contracting process, uh, we realized that we needed to add tax to the amount. So that's going to be amend amendment uh, this one. Uh, okay. Are we tax exempt? So we are. Uh, <coughs> Jeff informed us that uh, we, we have to add tax when a provider is purchasing a product on our behalf. That's when tax is required to be added. All right. Uh, Oh, and as you said, sole source provider, is that because we have a certain brand of equipment? And that, that is correct, sir. Okay, so, they're, they're not the only person in the universe that does baggage handling. Uh, that's correct. Um, so we utilize Control Touch, and so it's our existing system, and it's upgrading their system to our product today. Very good. Yeah, I took my Dell to Apple store and they wouldn't work on it. <laughs> really? <laughs> That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Item seven, do I hear a So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Seven. Aye. Item number eight. Item number eight. Approved distributed energy resource agreement between Tate and Voltus Incorporated for a term of five years. Uh, we've got the right to terminate this contract at any time. And what this will allow uh, Voltus to do is put meters on our feeders or our electrical feeds. And it'll allow dispatch opportunities to curtail our energy usage at certain peak times within the Southwest power grid pool. Um, we get to decide whether or not we dispatch those opportunities. So they will integrate into JCI, which runs our heating and air conditioning um, system. And so our engineers will get a notification. They'll say, would you like to curtail your energy usage for 10 minutes? Typically, it's a 10-minute period um, at peaks of high usage along the electrical grid. We can either accept or deny it. Um, there's no issue if we say no. Um, if we accept it, we receive 51% of that revenue back to us. Uh, Voltus is estimating on last year's usage and the number of curtailments that they had that we would have received around $40,000 last year. Um, of course, that's an estimated number, um, but it is an opportunity for us to to reduce our energy usage when it comes to our HVAC. Um, that in talking with Brian, we would do it only at times where we knew it wouldn't impact our passengers. If it was hot outside, it's not going to decrease the temperature where people would notice. If it's cold outside, it's not going to uh, decrease the temp um, to where it becomes uncomfortable in the terminal. So. I'd like to recommend approval. Move approval, item eight. All those in favor? Aye. It's approved. Item nine. Item nine is uh, reject bids and withdraw request for proposal for, for proposal for number IT wayfinding 23. This RFP was issued to refresh and update all of our electronic displays for bids, uh, bids and gids. Uh, throughout the terminal. So flight information displays, gate information displays, and baggage information displays. We received one proposal that was uh, well in excess of our budgeted amount. So we're going to try this again. I, I felt like that was a good program. So. Yeah, so we we have a RFP out right now on, on the street. Okay. And so we're, we've adjusted it. Um, and uh, I think bids are due by December 28th of this month. Okay. And what that'll do is we will replace all of our electronic monitors throughout the terminal and standardize them. So if you walk around today, some of the monitors don't match or they might be faded. Um, this will just refresh everything. It's that Bill versus Apple thing. Yeah. So we'll, we'll likely bring that to you in the January meeting. All right. Any questions? Do I have a motion on number nine? There's approval number nine. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, 10 and 11 can be taken together. Okay, great. Um, so number 10 is to reject bids and request for proposal for uh, and rescind award of agreement to Orion Security Solutions in the amount of $249,883. This uh, was uh, brought to you all for consideration last month and it's for the replacement of our electronic circuit boards. Number 11 is to approve that agreement, that same agreement uh, with Orion Security Solutions um, in the same amount of $249,883 for the replacement of electronic circuit boards. The difference here is that um, when we brought it to you, we went out to RFP, and then when we when you all approved it, we went to contracting, and it was identified there was a state contract with better terms. And so we're just rescinding the initial award and then awarding it under the state contract. Okay. Good. Saving money. Mm -hmm. 
Item 10, anybody approve? Approve item 10 and 11 together. Right. 10 and 11. Yes, 10, 10 and 11. So move. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Okay, item 12. Item 12 is approved five year airport capital improvement plans for the fiscal year 25 through 29 for Tulsa International and Tulsa Riverside Airport. In November, I brought this to you for initial consideration. Um, December 6th, I sent an email with both of these plans attached to it with a, some comments as to what I changed. The only thing I did change was I looked at 25 and 26 projects and increased those by 10%. Uh, previously, we increased 22, 23, and 24 by uh, regressive amounts we started with a higher amount and then we went through to 24 thinking that by 25 things would be back to normal um they're not uh so we we pumped them up a little bit for 25 and 26 and i'll look at those again um next year but uh for tulsa we have 26 projects in the next five years totaling 80 million three hundred twenty six thousand dollars in 2025, we're looking at uh, several projects, taxway Kilo reconstruction, taxway Mike reconstruction, restroom improvements, security fencing, uh, landside cargo pavements, uh, rehabilitation, and uh, continuing the wayfinding sign upgrade project. Um, for Riverside, the next five years, we uh, have a total of $7,645,000. For 2025, we have three projects in design planned. Uh, drainage project at the entrance of the airport, uh, taxway golf, 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 and associated perimeter road rehabilitation, and also the rehabilitation and widening of uh, runway 1331. If there are no questions, I'll be happy to go through these, but if there's no questions, um, we would recommend approval of item 12. Any questions? Approve approval item 12. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item 13. Item 13 is accept and approve pending FAA bill grant number 112 and the amount up to $2,610,000 for the construction of the airport terminal vestibule improvement project. Uh, management would recommend approval of item 13. This is the doors down below. Yes. yes. Yeah. So moved. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Item 14. Item 14 is amend pending FAA bill grant number 110 by adding $1,900,000 to the grant for the for the total amount up to 11 million. $400,000 for the construction of general aviation and facility and federal inspection services facility. Uh, last month, I came to you with this same grant, uh, any amount up to $9,500,000. At the time, I wanted to get this in front of you. Uh, the FAA and I were kind of going around and around what was available. I did not want to give us all sense of how much we would be receiving from the FAA. So I took the lower amount. Uh, come to find out, it is actually $1.9 million higher than anticipated. Uh, some funds were beginning to run out. If we didn't use them, uh, we would have lost them. Um, but in any case, uh, management would recommend approval of item 14. Any questions? No, I'll take it. I need to hold it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Item 14 is done. Item 15. Item 14, excuse me, 15 is accept bids and approve award of contract for employee parking lot A expansion project to Ellsworth Construction LLC in the amount of five $565,161.90. Uh, the employee lot A, we have two lots as employees, lot A and lot B. Lot A, we're going to expand 
about 180 parking spaces. We're going from 230 to 407. Um, we received eight bids on this project. The highest was $1,012,437.20. Engineer's estimate was about $108,000, uh, which was 43% 40, below the lowest responsible bidder. Uh, management recommended approval of item 15. If I could also just say this, this project came about as we think about capacity constraints in the garage, and we are parking valet cars in the garage, and the initial thought was we might use an employee parking lot to do overflow parking in valet, but in order to do that, we had to expand employee parking um, in another area. Okay. So this will give us the ability to take additional capacity with valet. Very good. Any questions? Uh, I have a motion. Um, move approval item 15. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's approved. Item 16. Item 16 is a accept, accept selection approval order contract for professional design services to H.W. Lochner Incorporated in the amount of $99,642.84 for the wayfinding improvement implementation project. We had a wayfinding master plan uh, done here at the airport that took into consideration all of the signs in the terminal building <laughs> along the curb in front of the terminal and the parking garage and the entrance and exit roads. Um, Lochner has looked at that master plan, has identified several different phases that would group projects or group signs together that make sense. We replace these signs and we replace these signs and so forth. <clears throat> this is phase one. This is this project along the curb. So they will be designing the removal and replacement of the signs along the curbs to match what the uh, master plan has identified. Mm -hmm. uh, management mm -hmm. level approval of item 16. This is kind of what, a question. You were, yeah. <clears throat> and one, I didn't, yeah the, um, so the ones that are on the curb, you mean the ones that are on the building, can it be the building, or the ones that are yes. this way that are off the side of the building? I'm, all of the above. Oh. So today, when you pull into departures on the departures road, the signs are actually parallel to the road. So you yeah. can't see them till you're right there. Right. These will create a sign that's vertical and per perpendicular to the road. So you'll see it as yeah. you approach. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, big improvement. We're well, very yeah. excited about huge. this. It is hard to tell when you drive up unless you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then over time, will all the signs kind of have the same look and feel? Because right now you have all different colors and all, and it's really. <laughs> yeah, so maybe little... next month what we could do um, is provide an update, an overview of what the signs are going to look like, because um, they will all be the same and in the same color family brand style. They reflect Tulsa's like Art Deco um, heritage, but, but also the, the Tulsa brand, which is the navy and yellow and it, it just looks really good and, and sleek and modern, and it's a big improvement. I think you all will like it. It's taken us a long time to get to this point, and we have in our budget this year $750,000 to begin implementation. And so this is part of that effort. And then Frank had mentioned in our in our CIP um, for 25, we've actually allocated some funds from the FAA to help pay for this. But it, it's going to change the impression, you know, the key is do people do people look at the sign um, and, and then follow them. But I think you all will like what they look like yeah. at the end. Yeah. Any other questions? <clears throat> right here a motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Item 17. Item 17 is approved change order number three for third generation electric. Uh, to extend the contract time by 65 days, uh, this extension is due to supply chain issues. Uh, we're having some difficulty receiving automatic transfer switches and uh, also the main distribution panels for the parking garage level one EV charging stations. Um, this project is the first phase of implementing a large move toward electric vehicle charging stations. Um, 
<clears throat> the original contract was 365 days. The 65 days has increased it to uh, 425. We anticipate now the project will be complete in March of this year as opposed to January. Uh, there's no additional funding increase due to this time change and the management recommend approval of item 17. Any questions? Do I hear a motion? So, so, second. All those in favor? Aye. Big right eBay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In eBay and Amazon, you can buy it. That's right. <laughs> item 18. <clears throat> item 18, we kind of discussed a little bit in our, our TI-82 meeting that this is approved sublease and concession agreement with TNP Fuels LLC, effective upon the earlier of a COO or March 1, 2025. This is a sublease for the development and operation of an automotive fuel station and convenience store uh, with an ACDBE goal, according to our concession agreements. Um, again, this is a little under two acres. This is at our market rate, which was recently set on a reappraised value for the retail frontage there on Airport Drive. Um, and looks like an estimated, based on the concession projections, around $187,000 a year or a total lease value on the primary term without the options of around 5.6 million projections of the airport's share of that revenue that would be out of that. Um, so uh, excited to move forward again with developers we know that are familiar with building on our, uh, you know, on our developable land. And so, um, you know, with that, I know we've got Mr. Patel in the gallery. I know we've got a ribbon cutting after this uh, for another project. But again, we're excited for a high quality amenity here and uh, the work macro. Does this space on the corner, is there a gap between the hotel and this? Yeah, and there is a little bit of a gap there that leaves some further development. We've mm -hmm. right now got it. It was part of a you know, kind of a option that was never exercised on the airports. Uh, I'm sorry, on the hotel uh, side of things. And mm -hmm. so... Uh, it does lead for some additional retail development there. Uh, should we decide to to uh, continue to infill in that area, or for you know if if that and when that hotel uh, looks like uh, it's time to rebuild it, uh, a footprint that allows for it. So in the meantime, you'll just put Bermuda grass in to bridge it, or yeah, right now it, it's grassed as it sits, and so that would uh, intent I think would be to remain the same and make it you know look quality and 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 you know not. Um, out of place for the, the rest of the setting there. I would just like to add that we have been looking for a partner to secure a convenience store for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, back when Jeff Mulder was here, yep. we had talked about it. And so I know that Daniel has, has explored every opportunity. <laughs> and I just really would like to thank the Patels for joining us and investing in this project. It is going to improve the service to our customers, but also our employees. Mm -hmm. And so looking forward to getting it kicked off. Yeah. Well, I think it's a great improvement for our customers. Yeah. No approval. Second. All those in favor of item 18? Aye. Aye. Item 19. Okay, item 19, another one that uh, is a passion project for me and near and dear to my heart since I've been working on since getting here, which is uh, the business lounge. Uh, so this will be a membership access lounge. You will have a pay to access capability as well. Uh, this is a well-known group. They have the Escape, I believe 1903 lounges. They have around 20 lounges in U.S. airports. They're actually a U.K.-based group. Kabu is the name of the company, and so they've got a number of lounges through the UK as well. Um, and so uh, we've been working with them for a while now, kind of we're vetting them and one other group that uh, we had uh, contacted about potentially developing uh, what is right now an old deli space. Uh, if you're looking at the security lines and to the left, there used to be a little bagel shop there. Mm -hmm. That bagel shop, but here we go, thank you very much. Uh, so that bagel shop will then, uh, you know, be taken over along with some of what is now the known traveler corridor and the exit lane there. It's a 20, 30 foot wide corridor that doesn't need to be that long. So we'll still retain the exit corridor, but that will allow us to make this secure side accessible. 
like you would see in other Centurion or mm -hmm. priority pass lounges throughout the U.S. and, and other airports internationally. And so, uh, again, they, they have a strong partnership with Amex, so all Amex card holders, as well as Priority Pass, which is through Chase and other card programs. Mm -hmm. One, I think, has that as well. Uh, allow for those members to have access. The way their programs work is that the membership uh, fee is paid by those credit cards, or you can come up and pay in person uh, if you want to just pay cash. Uh, they provide a, a higher class business lounge setting uh, where they have nice amenities there, like uh, some snacks and drinks um, and uh, other yeah. functionality. So um, we're excited to work with them. There, uh, this is a 12 year agreement. Uh, total capex on their part uh, is around 2.6 million dollars. So they will be spending a significant amount of money relative to the roughly 3,100 square feet that they'll be taking over there. Again, activating a retail space that in a Land side access has not been easy to lease up, uh, as we've seen. So uh, turning it back onto that secure side access, yeah. giving an, again another amenity. I know we've heard from the remoters and from a num number of travelers that they would love to have this kind of business lounge service. Mm -hmm. and, um, these are some some you know, images and renderings of what they have in other locations. They're really their team, the internal design team, works very closely uh, to help ensure that the design reflects the community that they're in. So I know they're, they're looking right now at the Tulsa branding and Tulsa imaging and you know our, some of our community amenities to say, how does that play into their own products? Uh, the brand Cabo? Uh, Cabo is the name of the company, Escape Lounge. There's Escape Lounge. Right. Yeah. And it's not an escape room. That, uh, <laughs> you can get in, but you can't get out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We, we do anticipate, based on projections, uh, around $196,000 a year to be the airport's uh, capture of that concession revenue um, over the 12 years, around $2.3 million. Okay. You come out of, of security, mm -hmm. left to right. Just to your left, left if you're facing right. towards the airfield. It's, it's the old... Yeah, so the old bagel shop, but we're, we'll just close that off, off and, and it attach it to the. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sure. Do I hear a motion for a Yeah. Second. All uh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 20. Item 20. Uh, again, excited to present this. This is a uh, follow up from our TAADT. Uh, discussion and so this is roughly 15 acres. A lot of that actually sits in a flood plain, but because of the use and function uh, of this uh, particular subtenant, uh, makes that land available for them and, and it becomes leasable land for us at fair market rates. Uh, we uh, have our market our, our rent set at about $156,000 a year on a 20 year lease. That's about a $3.1 million primary term lease value for us. Again, this is uh, has some mutual benefit. Uh, in that it creates and activates that tip where we're going to generate a lot of revenue. And then also being that it is an asphalt plant and we tend to use a lot of asphalt, we hope that might help us in some future projects uh, go forward as well. Yeah, I think that's a win-win for us. So congratulations on leasing the flood fund. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll, I'll read this uh, officially. This is approved sublease agreement and with Camo Farms Inc. to be a cowboy asphalt effective December 1, 2020. Sure. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is approved? 21. 21 is approved amendment number one to sublease agreement with the city of Tulsa effective upon approval. The amendment is to extend the term of the sublease for Greenway site. Uh, this is located uh, just to the south there of our building. It extends it out to April 2024. Any question? Yeah, we, I just, um, having the green waste there is no, there's no FAA problems or anything. So no, we've okay. not had any issues. We vetted it initially. The clearance is not a problem. Um, you know, the intent here is a short term based right. on the emergency um, need of the city, um, and and this is an extension beyond the ori original term. Yeah, uh, I will not be surprised if they ask for another extension. But this is what they committed to us. They thought they needed uh, based well, on the extension. Well, yeah, right. still, still a lot of cleanup going, but they're, well, they're making good progress as well. Yeah, they're making good progress. I mean, the Father's Day storm was yes. completely, uh, I mean, it just, it was like an ice storm, yeah. and, and we're coming into winter, so yeah. who knows? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, your motion. I move. Second. Aye. All those in favor of item 21? Aye. 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 Motion is approved, item 22. 
Uh, we'd like to, yes, we'd like to take items 22 and 23 together. Uh, item 22 is to approve the ground transportation operating agreement with Lyft Incorporated effective January 1st, 2024. And item 23 to approve the ground transportation operating agreement with Razor LLC DBA Uber effective January 1st, 2024. This not only extends their agreement, but we will now also, we are, previously we're getting a $2 pickup fee, but we will now also be getting a $2 drop off fee on all rides. Okay. There's a motion. Got it. Second. All those in favor of item 22 and 23? Aye. 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 Item 24. Uh, item 24 is to approve acknowledgement and consent to subtenant with Meridian Resources LLC for subtenant Steve Currington, effective upon approval, hangar number one at RBS. Sure. Move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We do not have an executive session. Is there any new business? No new business. In the TAA business? No. no. TAA, do I have motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor, and we're out of here. Right. <laughs> Everybody have a wonderful holiday. <laughs>